What is going on everyone? My name is Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the left side of the map in the blue color, playing as the God of Mischief, Loki. His name is Matrius, his opponent today in the blue, sorry, red color, playing as the God of the Sea and all different types of creatures that are commanded upon what that what am i saying i don't know he's not, it's poseidon and his name is spid also known as a dipsy also known as we think we know but we don't know uh so i'm not even going to attempt uh he's stealing my build orders which is good to see uh but a very very strong player smurf in the top 20 taking on matrius here on frozen waste with matrius's main god and matrius here is going to be showing us that loki i'm excited to see what Matrius is going to come up with. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I love seeing top players playing with off gods. So you get to see a little bit more of what is potential there because when you are a main god player, you can get stuck into trying to do the same things over and over again and just simply trying to execute a little bit better. As we see a little bit of that um, off god uh, situation happening at the start of the game there with a little bit of idle town center time. It doesn't really matter. It happens to the best of us, but uh, it does happen nonetheless. So Matri is here with Loki going to Olsark on Frozen Way. It's going to collect all of the goats as many as the goats as he possibly can seeing that granary on the ford location he's probably going to look to get a spy on this and see what's happening you don't want to spy a lone villager because that gives away the fact that that's the villager that has been spied so better just wait a little bit longer have a little bit of uh, maybe it's those guys maybe it's not but uh nonetheless i'm going to call him dipsy here because i like the name dipsy more than spid uh and we'll see how this game is going to uh, continue here. So if I take a little gander here at what Mattress looks like he's doing, he's currently having a little bit of walking time on the snowy pines. Now, if you've, if you've taken any hint as to how uh, I think the Norse has been, should be been playing, same too with Soup, is that you want to be attempting to, to mitigate as much walking time in the early game as possible with the Norse while delaying that third ox cart. Now, delaying the third, de not getting the ox cart on these trees versus getting the ox cart on these trees is much of a muchness. You don't really gain or lose too many resources based on that. But if you can not get the third ox cart and mitigate this walking time, you will basically get more resources than not. So we're gonna we're gonna see Matthew is doing it's kind of an old school build, but he does get the, the two old sark, and it's a little bit safer to do it this way when you go two old sark, uh, and the temple's gonna be coming down as well. So it's not gonna be bad, it's not gonna be good, it's just what it, kind of what it is. He could do better if you wanted to refine the builds, but if you're playing off sieve, you don't really work on those extra things too much in the early game, and and such is uh what happens here. now difference being here we talk about what dipsy's doing over here uh in his base he's got four villages on wood at the start of the game here which is very very peculiar for a poseidon he is going to be aiming for what looks to be a 3 30 advance time and oh he's getting out of theseus as well which i really don't like uh i'll talk about that a little bit later but i think that in this matchup especially on this map poseidon players should be trying to advance as fast as they humanly can against loki and against thor maybe not so much important against odin but for reasons that might become apparent later the reason why you want to advance uh fast here is you want to defend your hunt and you want to be punishing your opponent's hunt so the big thing here is that if you advance fast here the norse player will be finishing up their hunt right about that four minute mark so if you can get your Theseus and your Hippolyta, it's important you get both of them in there. Otherwise, the villagers can just shank back and you're going to lose a lot of that HP and, and a lot of that early game pressure is going to go onto the other player's uh, side of the, the, the game here. So if you can get that Hippolyta and that Theseus over here by about 4.30 when these villagers are all set up, which they would be getting in at about that point, then you can push off and there's no way for them to stay. If you just send a Theseus in here, like we can see a lot of the time happening with the... Uh, with the Poseidon plays, in fact, we are. In fact, just seeing uh, Dipsy defending with said Theseus, uh, you're going to be in a bit more trouble. So, Dipsy is playing this safely. He's going to be returning back into his home base. He does have the caribou here. He's got the, the lure that's brought in a couple of uh, huntables as well for him to eat a little bit later. But he's going to run. He's going to lose out on that early pressure that is potential with Poseidon. 
Now we've got the Longhouse coming down. Matrius' temple is now starting to pump out those Hursa. Not being hindered at all means he's going to get everything out as he wishes. He's going to have his Longhouse coming down. The, uh, the Trolls coming back. And look at this amount of herdable that Matrius has managed to get himself with the double Olsark. And he's getting more coming back as well. Two more goats coming in. So this is effectively what Matrius is saying here is, I don't even care if you push me off of Hunt right now because I can just come back onto her 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 Herdables with Husbandry and live the dream. Now, a lot of people are like, why does this matter so much? Isn't it just enough value that I can just push my opponent off Hunt? And it's like, yes, pushing your opponent off Hunt is going to be great as we are seeing Matrius come in and push uh, Dipsy off of Hunt here. The Hippolyter is out. The Theseus is out. He's going to have to delete this Granary here as well. Uh, and he's going to do that. But the point is that if you have to come back onto the Herdables, it's not that big of a deal. You get Husbandry. And the fact is every single villager that comes out of your town center going onto the Herdables is immediately gathering as opposed to sending them out onto their hunt. That is a very, very big deal when it comes to down to like how many resources you're actually going to be getting. As we see a nice little surround here from Madrix going after that Hippolyta that is very much out of position here. As we are seeing Dipsy in his base, he's getting out those Hippocon here. He's getting two of the stables. A nice building placement around the back of his base to defend his gold mines. The villagers are happily sitting on this position. We've got the medium Hippocon coming through as well for Dipsy. And he's got a third stable actually. So going mass Hippocon against the Herso here. Uh, very, very big commitment into the Hippocon. We'll see if it's going to pay off for him. This effectively allows the Loki player to go mass Herso themselves. So you're not forcing out throwing Axemen. You're not forcing out Archers. You can just... Or you're not forcing out raiding cavalry or anything like that. You just, yeah, they can just go full Hursa and you're saying, okay, that's fine. Uh, and this this build does kind of work against Loki. You just need to make sure that you're getting out copper mail, bronze mail as fast as you can, heavy cavalry, spirited charge, all of those big ticket upgrades to actually fight the Loki before timings hit. Things like flaming weapons, symbol winter, etc., etc. It does allow the the Hippocon to move around the map and get some raids. Effectively, your Hippocon are trading roughly one for one against these hurts. You can see 10% armor, 20% armor. The HP is roughly equal, 165. The uh, damage is a little bit less for the Herso versus the Hippocon. Things even out fairly, uh, fairly much. And that the, the, the the, this cost of the Hippocon versus the Hursa, very similar as well. As you do see a little bit of a raid here onto these stables. I love this play here from Matrius coming in, getting a little bit of favor pull build up so that when he fights, he's going to be able to get some myth unit spawns uh, as the Hippocon here just leading these guys around the map. The Hippocon have a little bit less speed than the Hursa at this point before they get Spirited Charge. And we are still seeing that one villager there uh, getting that favor income to try and get his speedy uh, speedy Hippocon out and Matrix is playing a little bit overzealous here losing a couple of Hippoc uh, so, a couple, a couple of Hursa in the main base of Dipsy it's definitely not something that he's going to want to have happen here is this final Hursa could fall if it does get hit by an arrow and he doesn't he gets out one HP remaining can get back in there and sort that out we see a nice raid there from Dipsy they're getting one dwarf kill as Hippocon going to be leaving the base returning back onto this wood line here Matrius does pull that one they're going to jump into the tower will this villager get away no it will not two villager kills there on that raid from Dipsy nice plays we're seeing a third long or sorry a second long house going down plus the the extra house do we have husbandry yes we do as the villagers are starting to come onto to that location there. Uh, one thing that I've talked about a little bit, which maybe Norse players should consider, is less villages on wood after you get Hall of Fanes. You don't need that many. You don't need this second longhouse. You're really just trying to get to the heroic age. Uh, and if you take these two off, you have enough to build the houses. You have enough to build the armory. It all comes up fairly nicely. Uh, but if you leave them on, you're going to be floating wood and throwing down extra uh, longhouses and everything, and maybe staying in the classical age a little bit longer which you don't really want to do because getting to the heroic age is a free upgrade for your Hursa and allows you to fight a little bit easier. But right now, Matrix is at 74 population. Dipsy's at 95. So a big, big advantage there. And not only that, Dipsy is now going to be getting himself Spirit of Charge. No, he didn't get Spirit of Charge. Oh, Does he not have it? No. 
Doesn't have it. It's not coming through. I don't know what he spent his favor on, but he's got no favor left in the bank at this point. Big, big raid here for Dipsy hitting those villagers nicely. The troll spawn coming in as the Ursa are going to be trying to fight back here. Another villager going to be falling here. One more with one HP here could go down as Hippocon swinging through for Dipsy trying to finish off every single last one of those villagers. Another one going down. The Ursa also falling here as Madrius is very much on the back foot in this fight. The ults are going down and now the troll goes down and Dipsy can just simply leave Respect, this position and have an incredibly big advantage here. Going up to 102 of 150 population. Lots of villages on wood here for Dipsy that I'm sure he would have preferred to have been on food in order to get to the next age. Uh, but he hasn't done that and he's going to have a lot of wood left over to get into that farm transition because he's not going to want to leave his base. He's not going to want to allow the Hursa to get any raids here and, and hit him as the Hursa are walking straight into Matrius's base, going to attempt to hit these villages. But Dipsy, very, very quick reactions here, going to be retreating back into the town center looking to uh, keep his villages as safe as possible. The Hippolyta though does get caught out. That's a very, very nice pick there for uh, for Madrius in order to like get a really good fight on a second gold mine. But uh, like that being said, Dipsy's got those two medium gold mines in his base. He can effectively go straight to the Mythic Age and not have to even worry about leaving his base at this point as he also does get himself the Watchtowers. Now, you do have to be careful when you get Watchtowers a little bit if they're not uh, secured. Uh, so I can just come in and take them out. So we are seeing the farms coming down for Dipsy. Uh, actually, ship clicking them, which... If you are aware, is a actually a really, really big mistake. Each farm takes maybe, what was it, seven? Each farm takes nine seconds to build or 10 seconds to build. If you have three villages on each of these farms, it, it just, it just, every single one of these farms is going to take roughly 10 seconds to build uh, instead of each individual, each of all of them being built at once. Uh, in 10 seconds. So if you actually individually micro the villages, you get those farms happening much, much quicker. But big fight here happening for uh, for Madrius pushing in, taking down those heroes, but all of the units here seemingly getting taken out. A high ER spawn at the very end of this fight isn't going to help out too much as it seemingly looks like uh, Dipsy survives another day here. It's his favorite pull is starting to pull up, getting him that spirited charge. He's not gotten himself any of those chainmail upgrades just yet. Yet. Has Matrius? No, he has not. Uh, and I imagine Dipsy is either going to just advance here or he's going to get himself uh, his his spirited charge and everything else. But I think advancing here makes the most sense. Probably going through uh, probably going through Dionysus for uh, for this game would make a lot of sense here for Dipsy as the Hippocon coming back in onto the main base of Matrius's Loki here. The Hursa fighting on two separate fronts as both players trying to defend and put pressure on. The Hippocon getting pushed back here. Dipsy playing a little bit uh, slow with his food situation here. Not sure why that is. Matrius, on the other hand, he is now having to start throw down, throwing down his own farms. A little bit slow here to the next age. Still low on the production. Still a little bit behind because of all those villager kills that he's, or villager deaths, I should say, that he has had. The Hippolyta pops out here for uh, for matches, but Dipsy gets a Valkyrie spawn, which is going to be very, very big. Still trying to snipe down the Hippolyta that's going to be attempting to make a retreat for the tower, but Matrius says, no, you're going to lose that hero, and I'm going to continue putting pressure on in your base here as the villagers are the target. For Matrius as Hursa here, as this Hippocon here trying to help out, but the village is going to be falling nonetheless. A second town center now coming down for Matrius. I like that play, but it does give uh, Dipsy a lot of opportunity to hit heroic age timings and finish the game. We see the Valkyrie turning around trying to take down this villager here, not getting one just yet. Another villager falling there. Hippocon's falling. Hippocon retreating back for Dipsy. Very, very low on the food economy right now. Does he have plow? Yes, he does, but he's only got 12 farms here, which is really really not enough to support all of his production at this point and he still hasn't gotten any upgrades for his Hippocon but he does have Dionysus he will be able to get himself Thracian horses heavy Hippocon and potentially Spirited Charge, all of those upgrades as well as a Copper Mail can make these Hippocon incredibly difficult to deal with. However, it does play into Loki's bag of tricks which is a transition into heavy Ulfsark with Call of Valhalla and Swine Array, which can completely carve through 
Dionysus, Hippocon, and, and it does play into that, and, but Matrius is going to be a ways away from that for now. As Hippocon coming into this position, we might even see this talent center get targeted. I think that's a very, very smart play here if, uh, if, if, Dipsy wants to do that to really, really hurt uh, Matrius as more units coming in onto this position. I'd love to see a barracks get thrown down, maybe start making some Hapaspist here for Dipsy, but uh, sometimes Poseidon players just forget that that's, uh, that's a possibility. I see Sipicon are going to be coming in onto this position. There are a couple of Hursa in reserve here to defend as the gold mine is getting denied. For the time being, taking down an ox card is a little bit annoying, but that's about it. The villagers returning back into the town center is Hippolyta going to try and take down this iron here. Do we have a, a, any sort of attempt at getting an Atlanta out? It looks like we do not for uh, for Dipsy just yet. As more Hursa are going to be falling. The Hursa here underneath Tower Fire take a lot of damage. This iron here, you might think it's a good spawn, but in actuality, with the Hippolyta here, will take this one down very, very fast. The final Hursa is falling. Hippocon here for uh, Dipsy still running around the map still trying to cause some chaos but are getting kind of cornered here or kind of chased down by Matrius' Hursa and Matrius with two town centers now he's going to be catching up uh, if he actually decides to be building villages out of this town center which he is not see a Townsend now coming up for Dipsy as he is trying to keep himself in this game economically. Uh, but if he gets this town center up, then he's, all of his food economy is effectively going to villages and he's not going to be able to support his Hippocon. As we do see a big bronze fight happening over here. Matrius a little bit slow to react there. He does pull his Hursa back. These Hippocon have a lot of, of uh, extra effective HP now against those Hursa, but he is going to have to retreat away. These villagers still getting picked off as Matrius is causing so much chaos in the base of uh, Dipsy here in this game. More Hurst, uh, sorry, more Hippocon coming in to help reinforce this. Is the Apollo trying to fight this one off? The Hursa coming in, going to deny this town center. Get a, you don't actually get any favor for denying the settlement, but he's going to do a bunch of damage here to slow this one down. As more uh, of those Valkyrie coming in to help First reinforce this army, the Hippocon coming in here to say, get out of here. I am not allowing this. So the villagers returning in onto this position here to get the town center up as fast as possible. Lots of villagers on this one here. Four or Dipsies, he definitely wants to have access to these caribou and have access to this gold mine here as well as the Hursa retreat. And does Dipsy have himself spirited charge? Yes, he does. So he's going to be able to chase down the Hursa now a little bit. Uh, if you're aware of what like maybe top level Greek theory is for, uh, for Poseidon or for the cavalry unit, um, and definitely for Hermes. It's definitely thought that nowadays, Spirited Charge isn't actually worth that much. It's actually better to get Copper Shields, oh sorry, not Copper Shields, Copper Mail, than it is to get Spirited Charge, because you just get so much more utility, so much more survivability, and then effectively more damage onto your opponent's unit. And, and Dipsy hasn't done that yet, so he's not actually, if he, if he actually has a head-on-head -head fight, it's better to have Copper Mail, but if he doesn't, if he keeps on running around the map causing chaos, it's better to have Spirited Charge. So he's going to be playing around that, until he starts getting those upgrades. And now we see Bragi coming through for, uh, for Madrius. That allows those Hursa so much more damage, so much more HP, and he's going to continue to be able to put that pressure on. As we are seeing over here, the Hursa are hard going to win this fight here against these uh, only medium spirited charge Hippocon. Uh, he needs more technologies to kind of fight the, the heroic age Hursa of Matrius. So we do see this Hydra coming through. Would have liked to see him target down those those caribou there and, and, and kill them all and give himself potential extra heads. But against the Loki, it doesn't really matter that much. He's going to kill off that Hydra fairly uh, easily most of the time. As we do see some villagers walking forward, potentially going to try and get onto this berry bush. Not sure why he's going there, but he's feeling like that's a possibility. Hursa in the back going to get sniped down here by Dipsy as well. Nice play. As we are seeing her, so just making sure there's no one on this gold mine. I think it's 100% uh, going to be the case that Dipsy's going to be on this gold mine for the time being. Matrius is going to look like he's going to try and get to the Heroic Age very, very shortly here. Uh, sorry, Mythic Age, I should say. Does not have his market just yet as he does snipe said Hydra here. The Ox card on this position gets sniped down. Those Hippocon are going to have to leave this position, but Matrius has not had the time just yet to throw a market down. He's, oh, there he goes with one Hurst. I would like all of the Hurst to get this up as fast as possible. Hitting that timing of a Flimber Winter Flaming Weapons. It's going to be really, really big. Or alternatively, just going through uh, hell and just holding on to 
holding on to the the flaming weapons until a ceasefire comes through because sometimes Nidhogg and a and a uh, and a fire giant or two can be enough to force out a a, a ceasefire and then you can free reign cast that flaming weapons but a big raid coming through for Dipsy as he's kind of ignoring those hearse are going straight after the dwarves here trying to limit the amount of economy that the Norse player is getting but it doesn't really matter we've talked about a little bit these hearse they're just out on mass right now so they're just going to be getting so much more additional economy from targeting down and killing these hippocon each one of these hippocon is giving these hearse 1.08 favor per death which is equal to Nearly getting uh, basically one when a bunch of these dies, it's getting myth units, and myth units are resources, and resources are good. But Matrius here, he is deciding to go through hell, so he's not going for the Fimble Winter flaming weapons that we would sometimes expect Norse players to go against Poseidon, instead favoring uh, something else. Now, here's a little something, something that I've been thinking about, well, not necessarily thinking about, but I, I, I know is good. When you're starting to throw these farms down and you get a full town center, just send the villagers, have the trek over to this town center, build the farms. You're going to find yourself getting more resources in the long run by a lot if you make your farms efficient there. So you're seeing the raid coming back onto this position. Does pick off one ox cart. The dwarves all going to jump into the town center here as the, the Hippasco is able to take this fight very, very nicely. Town center is getting very close to going up 2600 HP and that will mean that Dipsy has to retreat back. And that means that Dipsy is going to go for his own th third town center, but he is very well and truly stuck in this class, or oh, sorry, heroic age for a long time if he gets this town center. Because he's got, he basically needs to go up to something like 30 farms, and that's going to be a long ways away here in order to support the village production, the Paspus production, her the, the Hippocon production, everything else. I do really, really like this fortress that's been thrown down by Dipsy, though, because it's a big, big structure. And not only that, it's going to allow him to rebuild his heroes without having to take his town center up in terms of villager production. As we see more raids coming onto this position, the Olsak are over here, and we do indeed see Swine Array that has come through for Matthew. So very smartly getting that. We see the Nidhogg coming in onto this position. The Hippolyta is out. The Fortress is out. Hippolyta does a lot of damage to the Nidhogg, but the Nidhogg is going to be able to clean house. Look at that splash damage onto those uh, Hippasmus. And we also have to remember the Fire Giant are going to be coming in on mass right now for Matrius. He's got 76 favor in the bag. He's going to be spamming them out. He might even think about getting himself Rampage here because of how much favor he's got in order to make those Fire Giant even more bulky. But all of the units here seemingly are falling and a huge mountain giant spawn here for Matrius that's going to be able to take down the uh, the fortress here incredibly quickly and then we see the Nidhogg simply just flying over here going to start taking down the villages look at that splash damage onto those villages he doesn't manage to pick off too many but he does push them off the gold mine for sure we see the Hippolyta coming through here and the Nidhogg should not target the Hippolyta at all does three damage a shot there to the Hippolyta I'm not sure why it's so low it should be more than that but it just have not, minus 90% damage versus heroes. There you go. That's why you definitely do not want a Nidhogg targeting down heroes if you can help it. We just see the fortress getting taken down. More fire giant coming into this position. And Dipsy is effectively in this position forced to cast a uh, ceasefire, which allows Matrius the opportunity to cast his flaming weapons. But I feel like Dipsy is going to realize that it's just the extra minute is not going to be enough to prepare and defend against the flaming weapons. And maybe simply just game over here. He's got very few resources in the bank. We see more military academies coming up. The population situation very, very poor here. No market to spend that gold that he's gathered uh, just yet. More units coming through here to try and defend this position. The Hursa are so strong. They are effectively champion plus Hursa because you get 15% per um, per age up on top of, of, of your Hursa, which is a little bit more than the Lion upgrades would give you. So they are champion plus Hursa here, uh, pushing in against medium infantry. Yeah, they have Haspis, but they're just not enough, especially with the Nidhogg to boot. Townsend are getting grabbed there for Matrius and Dipsy in that in that position, in this position right now, decides game is over and does decide to tap out there. GG. Well played by Matrius, showing us that Loki here against the Mass Hippocon. The Hippocon did do some very, very nice damage here, but I feel like Dipsy didn't really 
capitalize as much as he could have on the economic advantage that he gained by picking off all those early villagers here. He was actually trading fairly well here, I would say. Check, look, check the post game out for a little bit here. Resource-wise, look at this advantage that Dipsy's got here. He has the advantage, but he just did not make it really work for himself here. As Madrius's raids were just way too good. If we check the military tab as well, Madrius's kill loss is the story here. It's a 40 unit kill loss differential. And while the kill loss also, is, you have to take into account that a lot of that comes from free myth units and myth units in general. This is still too much, you, too much to uh, be behind to make a comeback. And I think maybe if Dipsy had stayed on two town centers or even stayed on one town center and went to the mythic age, bronze timing on this town center, focused on getting himself to rage and horses early, he could have potentially been a little bit more all in, a little bit less town center uh, driven here. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a frozen waste specific strategy because you, you know where the gold mines are going to be. You can't sneak gold mines on frozen waste because they're just so obviously placed. And you can get these builds and more aggressive one town center play to happen. And the fact that Mattress went for an earlier town center means that he was going to be stuck in that in that classical age for a lot longer. So you can definitely force a heroic age kind of timing here, even with Dionysus in Greek, which is not as strong as the other civilizations, but still good on this map nonetheless. But Dipsy doesn't get it, Matrius does. And if you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the uh, subscribe on the YouTubes. If you guys are really enjoying all the content, you can head over to Twitch, hit a, hit a subscribe there as well. And I'll see you guys in the next game. Bye.